Hey, and welcome to another Emir Q&A. This week, we have a question from Jonathan, who asks, uh, explain to a non-techie how the recent AWS troubles did not affect serverless hosting. So this is, it's a bit too early to, to know what exactly happened. AWS did not do a post-mortem still. I would not say that AWS, um, the AWS outage did not affect serverless hosting because some services were impacted. Uh, for example, the Emir, the main Emir uh, Laravel application was down, but all the sites that uh, Emir manages that are deployed on serverless uh, stayed up, which I talked a lot uh, during the as it was happening because it made me really happy. But in some ways, there is a luck factor to it. It's that the the outage did not affect the services that I use uh, versus uh, Laravel Vapor. I was in the the serverless the serverless serverless Laravel uh, Slack while this was happening, and a lot of a lot of people had outages, but a lot of people also didn't have outages. And what it came down to. Um, through my investigation, at least as this was going on, is that the API, one of the services, to not go too too deep into uh, into things, but one of the services called API Gateway uh, has two versions. One it, one is it's basically V1 and V2, and uh, Emir uses V2 exclusive, not exclusively. You can use V1 if you want. But the default is to use uh, version two, while a lot of the uh, Lar- while Laravel Vapor uses V1 as the default. But what ended up happening, and this is really an educated guess, but the big thing with that service, the API Gateway version one, is that it's it's a complex service that does a lot of different things. It does like CDN caching with CloudFront at Edge and all sorts of of different things and it's been my experience reading through these outages that these these kind of services that are glued together with with other services tend to be a bit more brittle um during an outage um i what comes to mind is uh the kinesis out outage earlier this year um and so I can confirm at least that anything that used API Gateway V1 was down. But talking to other people, if you used, so for example, for, for Emir customers, um, a, the API Gateway V2 stayed up and was working fine. I noticed some degraded performance at some point uh, as, the, as the, the outage continued. But in general, everything stayed up. Uh, also, Emir leverages CloudFront a lot more, and I actually have uh, product updates and things coming out, um, hopefully next week, actually, to even increase the amount of, of leverage that uh, I do with CloudFront. Because with CloudFront, the great thing with that is that it's it's multi-region, it's distributed, and the longer I can keep things cached in CloudFront, the, the more sturdy your site becomes um, during an outage because you can still serve the cache content from the CDN. So that got me really excited, but but the gist is that I was a bit lucky. The service that Emir uses did not get affected, but one of the things with Emir versus Vapor at the very least and a lot of other um, more complex architectures on AWS is that I try to use services that are, are much more... Um, uh, what would be the term for it? Um, but the the idea is that they're they're smaller services, not smaller in the size of their their usage, but smaller in the sense of their scope of what they do. For example, API Gateway version two is really just an API gateway. It doesn't have anything fancy going for it. It doesn't do a lot. Like it just it routes traffic. It you know, it receives a request and it sends it to AWS Lambda. It doesn't do anything other, anything fancier than that. And because of that, I think it adds, it potentially, I'm again, not an expert enough to really tell, but I feel like 
from my experience and what I've seen is it adds a bit of resiliency because unless that service specifically goes down or, or, or then you don't have any issues. What I was surprised though, um, is that Lambda itself did not go down. Um, so that also was really impressive because based on what was happening, like problems with EC2, EC2 is basically the backbone of Lambda as well. It's not Docker containers. Um, so I really expected that to go down and take everything out with it, but no. So the, the really, the, the short of it is depending on your architecture, you, you were lucky and Emir tries to like use more dedicated, more, um, narrowly focused services. So it's been really helpful for that. But anybody with Laravel that host that used a elastic load balancer or application load balancer or something else or applica or API gateway V2 did not suffer an outage. So I was there was uh, Jack Ellis from from Fathom and they didn't have any outages because of that. But it was still it was still a good. I still consider it a minor win because. I really did not want everything to go down and it didn't. And I'm glad that the architecture did well for that.